Hello and welcome to this Vetrica Spire tutorial. We are going to make a rather ornate, posh picture frame today. Um, I came across a piece of mahogany, actually several pieces of mahogany, at a, a reclaiming station and it was reasonably priced, uh, very reasonably, reasonably priced, so uh, I bought it and got, I'm going to make this rather spectacular picture frame. There's quite a number of procedures that I need to carry out because we're going to be a machine in both sides but um, what I really want to do is show you how to make this design from a drawing. So that's what we're going to do next. So we've opened a spire and we're now going to bring in a piece of art which is on my desktop and here it is okay so it's just a, a black and white bitmap at the moment and I want to make it a little bigger than this so we're going in and resize um, so we're going, going to do in the X we're going to do 400 and I think I worked at it to be 510 20 millimeters now in inches for those of you who work in inches that's what 15 and 3 quarter by just a shade over 20 inches long and approximately three quarters of an inch thick but I, I, I'm just used to working in millimeters I will alt alternate um, doing the whole uh, videos in metric and in inches to give everybody a, a fair go so I always work on the top of the material block and for there's a good reason why we're going to be using the center for this because we're actually going to be spinning this around and machining on the back I am NOT using the double-sided um, method within uh, Vetric Aspire um, because not everybody has that capability standard mahogany and I actually am using mahogany so I'm going to say OK there now I'm going to click on this or double click on this so I get some handles on it and now I can fetch it out to fit our material or closely you know this is a piece of wood it's a piece of art it doesn't have to be within a thousandth of an inch uh, you know within <laughs> within a, a sort of I suppose 20 though is fine <laughs> so we're positioned on here now and about the size the critical size for me is the 400 across here um, like I was saying I've got a piece of reclaimed mahogany it's off an old desk I believe in actual fact I found a label on it which I'll show you in the machining video um, that at some point it was either shipped or resold not quite sure in 1948 so who knows how old it really is but uh, anyway so what we need to do is ask Aspire to pretty well draw around and make vectors on these shapes and that's what this tool does here now we already have it selected so Aspire knows that we want to work in this area here it's already altered the color shading so it understands what the picture is about and really all you have to do is press preview to see if it is anything that you expect it to be and there it is it's as easy as that. A lot of people do have trouble with this, but 
it really is uh, an easy thing to do. Um, we're going to be v-carving these so to be able to v-carve this and machine the back side of this we're going to draw some more vectors of our, of our apply. Okay we can close that now and we have our vectors. Now at the moment if you press on one vector they all light up because they're all connected to each other. So we want to work on one particular vector which is this one here because we want to duplicate it but we can't because everything else is selected so we have to split up the vectors in other words deselect the vectors and we also want the outside edge to be a separate vector so you come in here to the chain and say well ungroup them unlock it which is that and you'll notice that the vectors have changed to a dotted line so that means if we come off and deselect we can then come back on and select an individual vector so what we need to do is select that one then we need to offset now first of all I'm going to offset inwards five millimeters now it will become apparent of why I want to do this shortly because I actually want to do a pocket on the other side uh, when I finish machining this turn it over on the the um, the bed and just machine a pocket out here uh, so I can put a picture in there but I don't want to break through into the v-carve areas so I need a boundary layer so let's make a boundary layer there's one boundary layer okay now I'm going to close that a second but I'm keeping that selected because I want to put another boundary outwards and I want that one to be I think this one's 10 millimeters let's try it yep that's it okay you'll notice that at no point does it go over onto the white so that means we're not going to break through although I could actually v-carve this and machine the whole back out and have it you know make it break through uh, that might be a nice effect as well maybe we'll do that on another one but uh, for this one we don't require it so we have our two vectors there that we needed we actually need this one as well so I'm going to deselect that now so now I have to join vectors up and separate them so I'm going to hold the shift down left click sweep over all the vectors I want to select okay so I want to sh press shift again and s click on that one and that one because we want to deselect them in actual fact we want to deselect this one as well okay so we've deselected the three in the front because we want to gather all these up together to do the v carving uh, we can close that and we can select the chain and group them so they've gone to a single line now so we know they're grouped and we don't want any of the others grouped at all because in actual fact we do we want that one. Oh, I can pick it. That one and that one grouped together and group. Okay, so we got two two actual grouped vectors now. That's the V-bit carving and the pocket, which is going to be done on the other side. And of course, this one we're going to machine the center out and this one 
we're going to machine the the whole thing out of the uh, the base material okay there's one more thing we need to do and that is to put a register hole in the center so we we have something to line up the six millimeter tool that basically is going to be doing most of this uh, we're going to use two tools just v, um, a v-bit to carve the v-bit carve in and a six millimeter end mill but we're going to use that six millimeter end mill and we're going to use that six millimeter end mill to line everything up for us to make sure that we are in the center. Uh, actually let's do that. Zero and zero and we're going to make this six millimeter and we're going to apply. Okay so all our vectoring and drawing for this particular job is now completed. So now we can go straight to the tooling. Now I think the first thing we're going to do uh, and in reality the first thing we're going to do is the V-bit carving. So this is the V-bit carving here. Um, yep, start depth zero. Uh, as we're working in millimeters, we'll choose the millimeter one that I have. And we're going to OK that. And we're going to edit this. It's, um, let's just check everything is correct. It's 32 millimeter which is about an inch and a quarter actually 90 degree if you use a 60 degree on this it'll just go too deep because uh, you know the thickness of the material is only just about three quarters of an inch um, oh 10 mil now that's a bit much it's mahogany it's quite hard so we're gonna go five millimeters uh, final pass half a millimeter which is what's that about a thirty second of an inch something like that um, 0.5 it's actually a little bit more than that it's about a fortieth of an inch starting to confuse myself now <laughs> Uh, clearance pass. That's how far the tool is going to be lifted off the material, which is is fine. Spindle speed twelve thousand. That's okay. Feed rate for um, that might be going into mahogany. That might be a little fast. I'm gonna I'm gonna knock that back to. Tw I'm gonna do say twenty five actually. Five. That actually, tw twenty-five point four millimeters is one inch per second. So that's sixty inches a minute. That's fast enough for a large tool like this, I'm sure. Um, plunge. I normally do fifty percent of whatever the feed rate is. I think that works out fine. So we're going to say, I'm, I'm just going to say twelve millimeter. 12.7 millimeter is half an inch. Okay, we can leave this as tool number one. That's fine. We're going to say okay. There is no climb milling or anything like that with this ramp. I don't think we need a ramp either. Safe distance over the material, five millimeter. That's fine. This is our zero zero five millimeter safe Z. A VCAV 1 calculate. So the next thing we're going to do is drill this center section. Everything else now is done with a 6mm end mill. So there's only two tools.
tool changes here. So we go to drill the center. So we're going to go to a drilling tool path. And yeah, 20 millimeters is fine. Um, select. I'm already selected with a six millimeter. Six millimeter is, is roughly quarters of an inch. Okay. Edit. I'm not worried about the step over. Step down three millimeter. Uh, probably two millimeter. This is you know pretty hard stuff, um, and I want to be able to allow this to to um, clear feed rate we're actually not worried about the feed rate plunge rate we are worried about I'm going to say five millimeters a second uh, that's about quarters of an inch or ju just under quarter of an inch so we're going to okay that So we're going to use peck drilling. Not worried about the dwell. Let's see. Let's calculate this. See what happens. Didn't go all the way through, did it? Let's turn that off so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to say twenty one and let me just calculate that's okay we want it to go through and close so our next operation then is this one and this one is a profile 20 millimeters that's fine um, actually we want this one to cut all the way through so we're going to go 20 point point five and say point five and it's the six millimeter again and 20 millimeter feed rate that's just about three quarters of an inch a second so that's about 30 inches uh, per minute. Feed rate 10. Uh, plunge, I think we're going to go down to 5. That's quite fast enough. Quarter inch a second, that's, that's okay. Um, inside, we want to cut the inside. Um, just check here again. 2.5 millimeter pass. That's going to be okay. I'd rather it take a little bit more time to machine this than than um, you know get it done quickly because this is mahogany and I don't want it splintering. Okay, these definitely. And we're going to go th a 3D. In other words, it's going to it's going to machine sort of a ramp like this, it's exactly what you can see here. Um, 12 millimeter, three millimeter. I'm going to give it an extra millimeter here. I'm going to go four. 12 millimeters long. I'll put four in there. Add the tabs. Um, actually, I'll move these tabs, I think. Nope. That was telling me, you know, do I want it where the machine enters, where, where the, the tool enters? No, not necessarily. I want one put there. 
one put there just makes it easier to cut through one there one there now that'll be fine to hold it because I need to take this off turn it around use this center hole to line up with the tool and then clamp this back down on the bed to machine the the back side of it out that's good and we're going to say so profile one that's okay calculate um, we know it's going to cut through that's fine okay perfect and close back to the 2d screen now this pocket next okay six millimeter tool again so we'll just reselect it edit diameter six millimeter passing depth three millimeter that's probably pretty fair but we got 2.5 2.5 step over that's okay this is way too fast although you can alter this whoop, in mark 3 five millimeter like uh, mahogany does tend to splinter if you uh, if you go at it too 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 hard let's just check that in a minute yep that's okay no climb yes I always use climb milling it just makes a better better finish um, incidentally when I rotate this over and use this center hole to line it up with the tool uh, and clamp this on the bed I should be cutting through these uh, that hold the center panel in and removing this center panel so really it's just cutting out that piece there and uh, it's not going to actually touch the inner pad at all um, if you get my meaning pocket one calculate yep that's fine too and close and the next one is cutting the final cut out in actual fact I'll probably cut it out of the main body of the material before I flip it over but I haven't made my mind up about that quite yet profile all the way through um, select six millimeter okay edit 2.5 2.5 we're not worried about that we are worried about that 25 millimeters and we'll do this with five nice sedently and it, it'll be okay outside climb not worried about that I no need to put um, I could put them on but uh, probably no real need to we will we put in tabs 3d uh, that could be knocked back down to an eighth of an inch which is three millimeters edit tabs one, two, three. 
we'll have four tabs. Uh, one on each flat side, I think, because there's a little bit of rough material on this side, at uh, the bottom and the, the one side. Add tabs. Nope. Put this one right there. This one here. This one here. And this one here. Close. Everything else here is okay. No need to have ramp moves. We've taken care of that in in setting up of the tool cut. We're going in very sedately. Or sedately, I think might be the, the right word. Calculate. Yet we know we're going to cut through. Okay. So the only thing to do now is to make sure that everything is going to happen the way we think it's going to happen. So and we're going to preview. Oh, let's slow this down. I'll, I'll show you this twice, actually. I'll do this fast. Uh, this is the fastest that you can run it. And, you know, you just don't have any chance to see what's going on, really. I'll just show you. Boom. Now, it doesn't give you any real chance. So we're going to reset that. I'm going to slow the process right up to about halfway and then preview all nope. preview all the toolpaths and you know you can go even slower than this and what you see on here is exactly what's going to happen on the machine Except, obviously, that this cut that it's doing right now is going to be done on the other side when it's flipped over. So there you go. Doesn't that look absolutely lovely? And, of course, this is a substantial size as well. And it's going to look beautiful in mahogany. I think that is mahogany. No, it's dark oak. Um, and this is how you change <laughs> to mahogany. And that's a pretty fair example of mahogany too, because that's what the material... Well, obviously the material I got is aged, and it does have some varnish on it. And I'm going to be actually machining this in the underside of the material that I've got because on the top side uh, there's a few I don't know what someone has done to it they've pinned something to it uh, something square and there, there is marks there so uh, but yeah I'm not really bothered about that as long as this front face side it looks how it should and um, yeah, we'll give this piece of, well, 80-year-old? Minimum 80-year-old reclaimed piece of mahogany a new lease of life on someone's wall. So, the next thing we need to do now is to post these toolpaths. So we'll do a V-bit carving, and it's a G-code tap file. This is a, a general G-code. It could be uh, G-code uh, inch tap or G-code millimeter tap. Um, so we're going to save this one. Do a USB device. It's a V-carving. 
And let's save that one. And drill in, save that one. Very quick. Profile, save that one. Pocket one. Save that one. Profile two. And save that one. So there we have it. Let's just bring bring that out and we'll actually bring that out. Close that. Okay. Incidentally, if you want something to stay out here, see this little pin? Press that, and it'll stay there. It won't keep popping back in. So, there you are. That's a beautiful, beautiful... I think, anyway. And, of course, the next video... Maybe the next video. I'm not really sure yet what's, uh, what I've got slated. But uh, I do intend to carve this um, very shortly and uh, video it and get it up for you. So all I've got to say now is please like and subscribe. And I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's been informative for you. If there's any questions, please uh, you know, leave a, a message in the comment section and I shall uh, endeavor to answer it for you. So thank you for joining me and it's bye for now.